All right, welcome back. We're going to dive into a little bit more specifics of the inner workings of the camera and how to manipulate that to get the photo that you want. So I mentioned that a DSLR is particularly helpful in photography because it gives you the widest amount of control i.e. we can put it on a manual mode which gives us the photographer the artist full control of what we're creating as opposed to something like a cell phone or uh, what is called a point and shoot camera anything like that has automatic controls and that calculates what the camera thinks is the best photo for you when we are creating photos as a photographer for fine art, we want to be able to decide what is right and wrong. We don't want something external telling us how to take the photo. We want to decide what kind of photo we want and then figure out how to tell the camera to take that photo. So today we're going to dive in to a little bit more of that and we're also going to review some of those manual controls that I touched on last time, but we'll We'll dive into those again today. Okay, so this is still unit one, but this is lecture two. Uh, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about was your light meter. So go ahead and grab your camera if you have it. So I went ahead and I turned my camera to the on position. And then in this wheel, it gives you a whole lot of options. What are those options? That again is a lot of automatic controls that the camera can adjust for you. Those can be very helpful for particular situations in which you might need to take a really fast photo. If you're at a sporting event and you don't have the time to sit and kind of tweak all of those controls, if you just want to be able to take a very quick, good photo, there are things, different settings that you can put it on. Uh, however, the goal for this course is to teach you how to manipulate all those controls so that you can override some of those decisions that the camera is making for you. So for the purpose of this class, you are going to turn that toggle to the M. M is for manual control. And for the rest of this course, you will leave that button on M. That means you understand how the camera is working and you get to make those choices. And then you probably have some sort of screen that it puts you on. Your camera might look different than mine, but there is always going to be a menu screen of some kind. So make sure that you can navigate to that. And we'll dive back into some of those controls. Okay, so the thing that we want to talk about mostly today is exposure and how we figure out a correct exposure is through the light meter. So with your camera, go ahead and look through the viewfinder. So put your eye up against that little window and you should have taken your lens cap off. Go ahead and depress the shutter button, which is probably the big button to the right side. Sorry, all my left-handed folks. Cameras are just made for right-handed people. Um, but go ahead and depress that just halfway down while looking through that viewfinder. When you do that, on the bottom of the screen or maybe on the right side, depending on the type of camera you have, you will see all of a sudden this kind of grid sort of hashtag this row of lines and numbers it might be green it might be red so when i look at that i do start to see mine says 65.6 and i have a whole row of little lines and numbers uh 1600 and it says one and when i depress it halfway it has a little green green dot next to it. So that's what mine looks like. It's very much like this screen right here. Yours might look different. That's totally fine. Okay, that is called a light meter. That is something that is built into the camera so the camera can act as a giant calculator. What is it calculating? The amount of light. So the camera can say, I need to be at this specific setting to take an image so that you can actually see a full image with a full spectrum of lights and darks so I can show a picture, essentially. So that is what the light meter says. If it is on zero, 
that means it is a quote unquote perfect exposure or correct exposure. That is your camera saying, hey, this is the perfect amount of light. It's not too much, it's not too little, and I can create a good image with this. We talked about last time the idea that your eyes also do a similar thing. So your pupil does this automatically. So your brain is sending your eyeball a signal to constantly adjust again to create the perfect amount of light that is coming into your eye so that your brain can create an image based on that. So our brains are constantly calculating exposure. Our cameras also are giant calculators calculating that exposure, right? So we can decide to say, yes, let's set all of those settings so that that little arrow equals zero. If light meters are still confusing to you, go ahead and watch this video. It explains light meters in a nice way. Okay, so light meters are calculating something called equivalent exposure. So light meters tell me what a perfect aka correct exposure is. I use air quotes when I say that because that's what the camera is calculating as what is a perfect exposure. So actually what it's doing is calculating for a perfect 18% gray. So this is a gray card. This is used in photography to uh, help the camera calculate that. Why do we need things like this to help? Because sometimes the camera actually calculates wrong. 18% gray is not perfect for all situations, but it says, okay, here is this entire set of lights and darks in front of me. I will calculate so that the average is 18%. And then the camera sort of knows, okay, if I calculate the average as 18%, that will give me a good likelihood that everything will be visible in focus and clear lights, darks, etc. So that is what it is constantly calculating for is that 18% gray. Equivalent exposure value means you can create that calculation, that correct exposure using a couple of different ways. So if we wanted to calculate to five, we could say three plus two equals five, but also four plus one can equal five. There's different ways to get to the same result. And that is also true of the camera. Variables that we can use to adjust this is the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. And you can create a number of different combinations that equal a perfect exposure and that's allowed, you will need that structure, that flexibility, so that you can photograph in a variety of situations. So it's very helpful to be able to have different combinations that equal an image, a photograph. Okay, there actually is a, a formula. If you are a math-brained person, you can use this formula, it checks out. I find this confusing myself, so I never actually use this formula, but this is it. This is right here, if that makes sense to you, and if you want to use that for it to make sense to you, feel free. When we are using this equation, when we're trying to get to exposure, there are three variables or three things that we can shift in combination to equal a picture, a photograph. And that is the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture. So those are the three factors that work sort of like legs of a stool. So if we lower one, we have to heighten another. So we can shift them but we have to shift them in combination so that they always equal something visible, a photograph. So if you change one, you often have to change the other. And just as a review, when we talk about ISO, that is the sensitivity of the sensor in the back of our camera. Okay, so I have my camera here, I'm on my menu, and I see a number of different things. So it says M because I am on manual mode. It says uh, 1, 3, that is going to be the speed of my shutter. So how quickly those barn doors open and close. I'm at F5.6 and I'm at ISO 1600. That feels weird to me and that feels like a mistake because as a photographer, I know that will result in a really grainy image. 
So that is me telling my camera, I'm in a really low light situation or I need to take this picture really quickly. I don't have a lot of light, so I need my sensor to be really sensitive. But what that also means is that it's going to be very grainy. So if you look at an image that looks like sandpaper, that feels sandy, it's probably because the ISO is really high. So for me, I do not go past 1,600. Um, so I'm not really sure why the camera was set to those settings, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and change it. In order to do that, I am going to press the ISO button up at the top of my camera while holding that down. It automatically changes that screen to a series of numbers. Uh, for me, I like to take pictures at 400 or less, 800 is okay, um, but the more I go down in ISO, actually the clearer and crisper the image will be. So if you can take your images at 100, that's gonna, chef's kiss, be a beautiful, clear, crisp image. Oftentimes, we don't have enough light to make that possible, so we can do a pretty average okay kind of in between at 400, maybe even that 800, that's okay. Um, I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't go past 1600 because that's gonna be really grainy. We call that a noisy image. Um, it's not going to be particularly clear, but there are some artists, again, who enjoy that sort of grainy look. So maybe you want to override the camera's controls and say, hey, I actually do want a really grainy image because I'm taking a photograph of, you know, maybe it's like Nan Golden's uh, exploration of New York drug scene. That feels very grainy. That's very gritty. That's very real. That's very visceral. Um, it's not a pretty picturesque scenario. So she used grain to add to that feeling. So you can override those controls if you're taking an image that needs that. Okay, so I'm going to set my ISO at 400. That's gonna be a pretty nice starting point for me. Next up, shutter speed. So that's one of the legs of the stool that we can adjust to get to our exposure. So again, the shutter speed is the amount of time I like to envision barn doors opening and closing. How long do we keep the doors open to let the light in? Or how quickly do we shut them? That's the speed at which the sensor is gathering that light information at the back of the camera, okay? They're not always shaped like barn doors. Again, that's just the visual that makes sense in my brain, so I think of them like barn doors, okay? So this is in fractions of a second, so if we look at this scale over here, we can keep it open for a, an entire second, and often your cameras can do longer than a second. Um, I think this particular camera can do a 30 second exposure, which is a long time, right? That's a long time for the barn doors to be open and for it to be constantly collecting light. Or we can have it as fast as one one thousandth. Often our cameras can even do faster than that. So one one thousandth of a second is just a very quick rapid fire, open closed. Okay, when we do that, when we make that choice, we also need to understand that if we are making a really rapid image, barn doors open and shut, we are capturing a millisecond. We are capturing just a slice of time, a crisp, clear moment. Versus if we keep the shutter speed open, that means that light is moving in front of the camera as we're keeping those barn doors open. So this was taken with a tripod the water was moving, the rocks were not. So the rocks are very crisp and in focus because the light was being gathered from them while they were static versus the water was constantly moving. So this is taking the average of the amount of time that that shutter speed was open. Okay, so light is continually moving and reflecting off of that water all the while the shutters were open. It's gathering light, gathering light, when it finally closes, it records that entire section of movement there. Okay, so that is a choice. And they, they look like two very different images. So that is an example of why we need to have those choices to be able to control our artistic intentions. Do we want every single drop clearly in focus or do we want a hazy kind of ethereal abstract movement? So slow shutter creates the sensation of things moving 
average shutter has some movement, some static, and a fast shutter really captures just that millisecond, right? That very, very small slice of time. I put a star over 1 60th because that's a very important number. We need to remember that. That is the time that we can have if we have 1 60th or faster. So 1 60th of a second or faster than that to be able to handhold our camera. So our bodies and our hands actually shake and move as we are taking the camera. Even if you try to be as still as possible, you will still move. It's just the way that we work. So 1 60th of a second creates no blur if we just handhold taking a photo. If you try to take a photo that is slower than that, while just on the street holding your camera, it will have unintended blur, it will look out of focus, it just won't look crisp and clear. That doesn't mean that you can't take a photo that is slower, it just means that you have to have a tripod or something to stabilize the camera on. Okay, so remember that number 1 60th or faster is that hand holding marker, the golden rule. Okay, so what we are going to do for this week is to bracket. So what that means is that I'm going to take a photo at what my camera tells me is correct. So I'm looking through the viewfinder, I'm depressing that shutter button halfway, I'm using my ISO, I'm going to keep that static at 400, I will shift both my aperture and my shutter speed so that I can get that arrow back to the zero. Okay, so that's what my menu looks like right now and you can see this will actually give you my light meter. So right now it's just not accurate at all. So what my camera is telling me is that I don't have enough light. So what does that mean? I'm going to have to open the aperture. So I'm going to press the AV button, which is right here. That's aperture value. I will press and hold that down while spinning this toggle. And if I have lower numbers, it means the aperture is larger, right? So I'm going to pop that down to 4.5. And then I'm going to also adjust the shutter speed right now. So in order to do that, I can just press that toggle button independently. It will move those numbers. And as I'm moving that, you can see that little dash getting closer and closer to that zero and it's there and this is actually an okay combination of numbers because I'm exactly at 1 60th so I can hand hold that photograph it's at aperture f 4.5 so the f stop is the numerical annotation for the aperture value we just call them f stops and I'm at ISO 400 so all of that I'm okay with awesome so that's a combination creating an exposure that I'm good with. So I can go ahead and take that photo. Don't forget to focus. You do also want your focus to be on manual rather than auto. Again, for the purposes of this class, if you wanna change it later for your own personal exploration, you can do that. But for the purposes of this class, you want to be able to select your focus. So put it on auto. Don't forget to focus that image. We can take that and I then do have an image. So I was able to take an image of this room that created a photo. Not a good one, but I had a correct exposure. If I wanted to sit there and tweak it, I could do an equivalent exposure value. So I could maybe close that aperture one stop and widen the shutter speed, so lengthening the amount of time that the shutter is open, I could continue tweaking it from there. But right now, I have a correct exposure. That's going to be your correct image. So for this exercise, you're going to take one correct image, and then you are going to override what the camera says. So right now, I have one image that is quote unquote correct, I now want to go ahead and overexpose. So what that means is that I'm getting more light over the amount of light that I need to create a correct image. How do I do that? I can maybe, let's see, do I want to play with shutter speed or do I want to play with aperture? Both are fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do the aperture. 
for this, I'm at f 4.5 right now. So if I want to make that a little wider, go ahead and click the aperture value. I'll shift that toggle button. And oh no, that's actually the, the end. I can't, I can't make that any wider. I can't make those numbers go any smaller. That's the threshold of this particular camera. Okay, I'm gonna shift over to shutter speed. So it's at 1 60th. If I want to be a little bit slower to let in more light, ooh, I can do 1 50th, but in my brain, I know, yikes, okay, that's the hand-holding measurement. But I'm gonna say for the purposes of this exercise, that's okay. So I'll snap another photo at 1 50th of a second, and I know that that image is a little bit lighter. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. So that was my overexposed image. That was the second image. Now we'll take a third image that is underexposed. Okay, so I did one correct image. I did one that had too much light. Now I'm doing another one that has too little light. So if I am now at 1 50th, I can press that shutter speed. It was at 1 60th, now I'm gonna do one at 1 80th. Okay, so I'm just using one option lower, one option higher than was correct. Okay, now this one's a little bit darker. So I have one image that is quote unquote correct, I have one that's a little bit lighter, and one that's a little bit darker. And it does make a pretty sizable difference. Okay? So for that exercise, that is going to be your goal. But there's one more thing that I would like you to do, which is to write down, annotate those journal entries. So what does that mean? That means I'm just going to take a pen and paper and I'm going to jot down using my menu, okay, what, what, what were my settings? So I could say this was the wall, wall photo, I was at f4.5, at 1 60th, at 1 80th, and 1 50th. Okay, so those were my three settings, my three photos, my three exposure formulas, if you will. Okay, so that is what you will write. Um, for, for this, just keep the ISO the same, um, unless that's your only option, you have to change it. But I would suggest just playing with the aperture and the shutter speed for this exercise. And go ahead and write that down. You will need to turn that in in the comment section of Canvas, okay? So you'll be turning in your three images and in the comment section, you'll be writing your journal entries or your exposure entries, okay? So this here shows all of the different things that you could adjust. I really like this chart because we can think about sliding along this. So if this middle row was my perfect exposure value, I could shift either left or right for an under and over exposure with my aperture, or I could shift left or right with my shutter speed, or if I had to, I could shift that ISO. Again, the ISO is just personally the last thing that I shift, but if it's your only choice, it's your only choice. Okay, and you can also do different combinations of this. So maybe, like me, you are at the threshold of your camera, which this particular model, the threshold was the f4.5. I couldn't go any wider than that, so then I had to go to my next option, which was my shutter speed. So if you find yourself at the end of the spectrum in any one of those, know that you have other options to change. Okay, and please do complete this and understand it because we will be using bracketing on our big project that will be due next week.